Hi, this is Chad Johnson. If you're a videographer or a filmmaker looking to get some aerial shots cheaply, or if you're just interested in getting into RC quadcopters and want to record your flights, I have a great collection of products I've found that can get you in the air and filming good quality video at a relatively inexpensive price point. You still have to shell out some money for this, but compared to the alternatives, this is the cheapest way I've found to fly a GoPro camera on a stable enough platform to get truly usable shots. I've done a lot of research on this because as a videographer, I really think it would be cool to add aerial videography to my arsenal of tricks. However, I don't have a lot of money to throw at this. Before this solution, I was looking at a basic Gowie 330X quad for $400 and a decent transmitter for another $400, plus the price of the GoPro and any mounts or mods to make flying easier. So we're looking at $1,200 just to get started. With the items I've compiled here, you can be flying and filming for as little as $700, but I've included what I consider to be an indispensable mod that takes everything to a new level. Here's what I'm using. The AR Drone, a fun $300 quadcopter that is controlled by a free iPhone or Razer app. It's almost a toy, but it flies with reasonable stability, and with the iPhone it's pretty simple. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the AR drone, as a simple search will give you plenty of info on this really fun quad. The camera I'm using is the GoPro Hero HD. For $300, it's the highest image quality available in a miniature camera designed for action video. It's a tough little camera that sports people wear for skydiving, biking, surfing, or motorsports. It's very tough and it has a surprisingly good image quality. Also, a new version just came out with an even better lens and sensor as well as an audio jack. Now, how do I get the camera onto the AR drone? Simple, you use the AR drone GoPro undermount kit from etfet.net. It goes for around $79. It's an ingenious mount developed by a guy named Daniel who figured out a way to mount the GoPro onto the AR drone without getting any of the drone into the shot. Daniel makes these in Norway with a 3D printer. He's developing new versions for the mount for every shooting angle and they really make your drone a great platform for filming. Go to etfed.net to learn more. I'll show you more on this later. To fly the drone with the most control, you'll really want this next mod. The MacGyver RC mod for the AR drone goes between $130 and $165. In my opinion, this is the single most awesome item anyone can get for their AR drone. It's not necessary for getting a camera up in the air, but it really makes everything work a lot better. This guy Mike made up a mod kit that allows you to use an RC transmitter with the AR drone rather than your iDevice. The iDevice is okay, but with this MacGyver mod, you have so much more control and power and range that it's silly not to get it. There are two versions. There's the basic one for $130 and one that adds an extra switch to turn off or on LEDs you might have added to your drone. I've made another more in-depth video about the MacGyver mod that I'll link to in the video info. To learn more about the MacGyver mod and how to purchase, go to macdrones.com. You won't regret it. To power your drone reliably, I recommend Max Amps batteries. You really need some better batteries than the ones that come stock with the drone. I use Max Amps 1300 milliamp 3 cells. The stock battery gets about 8 minutes of flight time, and the Max Amps get about 12 minutes with the stock AR drone. They also have a 2600 milliamp 3 cell battery, which is great for really long run times, but a tad too heavy to use while you have a GoPro mount. Max Amps are high quality batteries that you can trust to work well and safely, unlike some questionable Chinese cheapo batteries that are prone to catch fire or wear out quickly. The Max Amps are rated at 300 charges, but I suspect they will last much longer than that. You can use the stock Parrot charger that comes with the drone on these Max Amps. You can get these great batteries at MaxAmps.com. So I'm out here today in my testing field where I like to come and check out things with my drone. So I've got on my drone the Max Amps battery, I've got the MacGyver mod, and the MacGyver mod transmitter, I've got the etfet.net GoPro mount mounted under the drone. I'm shooting at 1080, there's two different mounts, one for 1080 and one for 720. The 1080 is nice and uh, has a 127 degree field of view where the uh, 720p mode version is angled a little further down because 720 is a 170 degree field of view and you will be getting some of the drone in there so that's pointed a little more down but for today's purposes I'm just keeping it at the 1080 um, 
720 is great, so you can get some nice slow motion shots. You can shoot at 720, 60p, and then conform it to 30p for some really smooth slow motion. So I'm just gonna see if I can get up in the air and uh, talk us through a little run here. First off, I'm not using my eye device at all. I use it only for flat trim. It seems to work better if I flat trim using my iPhone. So uh, after that, I've got Wi-Fi off and uh, the app off, and I just turn on my RC mod. Then I plug in the battery, and it takes 10 or 15 seconds before it switches, the light switches to green here and then another 10 or 15 seconds to where the lights flash and I call that disco mode and that lets me know that we're ready to fly. All I need to do is hit the launch switch. Now there's two modes in this. One is called stable mode where it's using the drone's downward camera to keep it in position when you're not controlling it. I don't like that mode because it seems to have caused some flip outs when I'm doing some uh, tricky maneuvers. So I do what I call full control mode, um, which is turning the switch all the way clockwise. And then I'm in complete control, no use of the downward camera. In fact, you can even mount something blocking the sonar and downward camera. So uh, now I'm just gonna try to launch. It appears I've got a little bit of breeze, but not too much. I'm going to try this one without the nose gear just to see how it handles and uh, see if we can get some good footage. Got the GoPro rolling. Disco mode. Ready for launch. Now the breeze is pulling this away from me, so I'm fighting the breeze a little bit and trying to stay as stable as I can. <laughs> it's a little hard to do it when the sun's right in your face. I'm up in the air getting some semi-stable, fighting with the wind footage and uh, seeing what we can do here. I'll try a little 360. Now under calmer conditions, this would be quite smooth. And it does help sometimes if you have some software to smooth out the footage. Now, this wouldn't be possible without the RC mod. This thing is really helping me control it uh, much tighter than the iDevice can. So, try a little fast flying and we're flying we're flying now we're up from quite a height there I'm not sure if I'm in the frame that's another thing, you gotta eyeball things because we don't have first person view. But uh, I have managed to get some really good footage just from kind of using my eyes to judge the trajectory of the camera. There we go. We do get a little more vibration when you're climbing and descending so I try to get to a point and stay there if I can oh, now the winds carrying it again wind 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 alert that's way the F up there as you can see we are very small dots down here if you can see I'm gonna wave Hi, I don't know if you can see me. Okay, 
Here we go. I'm going to try to land it and catch it. Now, the trick is <laughs> to not crash, <laughs> but to catch. So I'm going to try to catch it. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Still rolling. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to lie to you here. It's rare that I get a chance to catch the drone. In getting to this point in my quest for cheap aerial video, I've crashed a lot and spent a lot on drone parts. So much so that it was cheaper just to buy another drone or two. But these things can take some abuse as well. Check out the other AR drone videos on my YouTube or Vimeo channels to see some great footage and spectacular crashes. And I want to thank Bo Lawrenson in LA for his contributions. He too has a 3D printer and has provided me with many experimental mounts that my bad flying often broke. Thank you, Bo. And thanks to my best friend from high school, Todd Bradley, for his helpful production work and for piloting the second drone as I tried to get air-to-air -air footage. It was a lot of fun working with both of you. This isn't a perfect solution, but for the price, it can be a fun and rewarding endeavor. With some practice, patience, and working within the limitations of the gear, you can achieve really nice shots. Now go get in the air and get some sweet video. This is Chad Johnson. I'll catch you next time.